How's that for a magazine? Now, if you saw this magazine sitting in the newsstand today, which you won't, by the way, would you be tempted to buy it? There's a picture of a scuba diver right there. And a, and, and, a, and a banner down there says, build your own diving loan. Now, I got a lot on my, on my tech tips videos. I got a lot of questions about how do I do that? How do I service that? Can I fix this myself? All kinds of stuff from guys who are handy, handymen or do-it-yourselfers. Can you just imagine? How about building your own diving lung? That's what we're going to do today. We're going to build our own scuba diving regulator. Now, don't tell your local dive store about this. They're going to be upset with me. Here's how it works. Step one, get one of these magazines. Because <laughs> inside this magazine, <clears throat> there's an article in here. This article is written by an acquaintance of mine, and uh, he actually explains how to build your own, he calls it a diving lung. Ah, why does he call it a diving lung, Kevin? Well, because in 1953, you all remember that year, right? In 1953, the word scuba had not been invented. That's right. The word scuba actually didn't appear until oh, into the 60s. And, and so it wasn't a scuba. It was a, a we were skin divers <clears throat> or lung divers. So in here are all the instructions on how to build your own diving lung. I'm going to close that, Kevin. I don't want them getting ahead here. And the first thing you have to do to build your own diving lung is you have to go to the war surplus store. You have to go to your local war surplus store. Yep, yep. Yeah. You know where they are. All over the place, right? It used to be. Used to be, it was fantastic. Go to a war surplus store, you pick up a brand spank a new 303 or grand 30 odd six rifle for $19. Still greasy, wrapped in paper, never been shot. Well, never been fired in combat anyway, maybe test fired. It was fantastic. Knives and webbing and gas mask hoses and all kinds of stuff. You could pick up stuff from the Air Force, like an oxygen diluter valve. But why would you want one of these? Well, because this is in the list of materials required to make your own diving regulator. That's right. You take one of these oxygen demand diluter valves, and this was actually used by the Air Force. This was the valve that the pilots would use to control the amount of oxygen they were getting in their mask. It was diluted. The oxygen was mixed with air because you didn't want pure oxygen. You, you just needed a little bit. So you had one of those. And then you get the other bits and pieces together, and they gave the instructions, and you had to change the plate, and you get a couple of hoses, some, some gas mat. They're over there in that bin over there, sir. You go over to the gas mask bin, and you root through it. You find a good set of brand new hoses, probably in a bag, and you buy those for $6, and you got this for $8. $8. Yeah, I know. We're up to 14 bucks already, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. And you get all all those bits and pieces together and you do it properly and here's what you end up with one just like this here you go there is your oxygen diluter valve this valve right here big knob on the top just like this one <clears throat> you see and your gas mask hoses come one out there one for the exhaust one for the intake and on the back you can see that plate there now this this fella <clears throat> this guy wasn't wasn't too good you see how this plate you look at here Kevin can you get close that plate with all those screws in it, he didn't do a very good job. It's not cut very smoothly, but it works. It works. And this, folks, is what we call a scuba regulator today. Back then, they were called a diving lung. Same thing. And I see that these tanks, <clears throat> by the way, these are old U.S. Air Force tanks as well. Uh, you could probably pick these tanks up for about $5 a piece. And you got some copper fittings and put them together. These were the tanks that were used to store air for opening bomb bay doors and and uh, and your uh, uh, carriage doors your your wheels on the airplanes and so on they used an old cornelius compressor if you see my previous vintage scuba about build your own compressor these are the tanks that the air from the cornelius compressor were stored in to open and lift the landing wheels and open bomb bay doors and other functions as well you need two of those and you put your scuba lung on top and just add water that's what i say there you go just add water. That's exactly what it looks like. Look at here's another one. And so now this one, <clears throat> this one you can see even better that this is a, it's a different model. This is a, a, an earlier model. This is a little later model. Same device. Oxygen uh, diluter valve. Diluter, but this guy was lazy. He wanted to get diving. I guess he was really angry. He didn't change it very much at all. 
put a plate on the back and they still got the red knob on. Most guys took that off of there and covered it with a nice chrome plate. You didn't need that knob on there. But the same idea. These are different tanks. These are smaller tanks. These look like old fire extinguishers maybe. And same copper fittings on there. This guy made a really nice harness on this. Maybe I can turn this a little bit and show you the harness on this. Boy, he did a really good job. I guess he was a better welder than he was a machinist because he made up a really, look at this harness on here, Kevin, all welded up nice and neat with big rings on it and a good heavy oh now there's a, there's a, a webbing from war surplus guaranteed i recognize it and he made up a nice harness but the part for the regular is a little bit crude see there just a hunk of steel with a couple of screws in it put the hoses on it, but it works just add water you've heard that before haven't you there you go a couple hours work war surplus 50 dollars worth of materials tanks and a regulator just add water there you go i got one more to show you Okay, here's another one. Now, this is pretty slick. Now, this particular outfit here was actually made by a friend of mine. He's, he's long gone now, Lou Singer, uh, who owned a company called Supreme Divers. Supreme Divers was located in originally in Buffalo, but then they moved to Toronto, and they were a big, big dive store in Toronto. They actually had four different stores throughout Toronto. One of the biggest dive stores we've ever had in Toronto for a long time anyway, and uh, Lou was very handy, and uh, this was in the 60s. When he had his big dive store, they had their dive store, the two of them. And uh, so he caught on to this idea, and he said, hey, there's a great idea. I can make regulators and sell them. And they had a scuba diving store. And so uh, he actually bought a lot of these, because these were cheap. These diluter valves were cheap at that time. And he bought a lot of them, and he was busy, good machinist, good guy. And he sat down and he made a bunch of them. The most interesting thing that he did was made this nice chrome cover. You see it there? Just a piece of metal shape he had it made for him holes punched in and he had it nickel plated and he covered up all this machinery on the front of here it's not necessary anyway he covered it all up the plate that's on the back is still there the uh, the big valve on top is still there and uh, this is a little different model as well he's got his gas mask uh, hoses here an old mouthpiece on there of some sort and uh, a couple of stickers on these are the same tanks from the from u.s air force war surplus and the same tanks, and he had a nice decal made and stuck on there. And for a harness on, uh, on these tanks, he just used webbing. Very, very common in those days. We didn't have backpacks, didn't have BCs, didn't have any of that stuff. We had no idea what that was. We just literally had two shoulder straps and a strap around your waist with a, with a buckle on it, a safety buckle. And we put it on our back, and off we went. Just to add water, right? Now, if you think I'm kidding that these are popular, this guy actually made these. Check this out. This is an advertisement from Popular Science in the 50s. But you can buy a diving lung. Does that look familiar? $89. Does that look familiar? Does that look like two U.S. Air Force tanks? Does that look like a modified oxygen diluter valve? I'm telling you, that's what it is. And they used to make these up and sell them out of magazines. What a great time to be alive, to be a scuba diver. Everything was homemade. Do it yourself. We were inventing things, trying things, and it was just wonderful. I have some great stories about my own, building my own surface supply a scuba system when I was 10 years old. Uh, fortunately, it didn't work, so I didn't drown. I'm still here. <laughs> if it had actually worked and I had got deeper than six or seven feet, I might not be here today, but it was a great time to be alive. So there you are, how to build your own diving lung. Oxygen diluter, the plans from the magazine, and you're all set. Just add water. I hope that was interesting. You won't see these anywhere else. These are homemade, genuine homemade scuba units, tanks and regs, all made from war surplus materials. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll talk to you again real soon. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. I'm going diving.